Greetings and salutations. I am your humble Adobe instructor, AJ Wood, and you're watching episode number 18 of I Create Content. All right, it's Friday. I appreciate you guys wrapping up the week with me. If you caught Wednesday's episode, you know I was talking about the auto align layers function inside of Photoshop. Want to take a brief moment, update you on my brother in law. He's still in the hospital, but he's in good spirits. And I really appreciate all the uh, nine comments that you left on Wednesday. So his family appreciates it too. So thank you very much, right? That was very nice. Today, we're going to take a look at at uh, using the clone stamp inside of Photoshop. I've got some quick tips for the clone stamp tool. So let's go ahead and jump in. All right, so to grab the clone stamp, that's S on the keyboard for stamp. And of course, the way we use the clone stamp is to hold the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. And this will let us grab our target image. So here is my source. If I make the brush bigger, you can see I'd actually paint out her whole face but I'm starting with her nose. If I go ahead and take her nose and place it on the other girl's face, slowly but surely, I can easily make twins. So there's a quick use of the clone stamp. But here are the tips. Take a look on the screen. I'm gonna undo that paint. I'm gonna go up here to the top. Notice it says aligned sample. If I check this box, I'm gonna sample her eye and this is what happens when a line sample is checked. If I go ahead and just paint a little bit and let go of my mouse, I want you to see as I'm moving the mouse on the screen, notice how wherever I move the mouse, it's actually painting the rest of her face. So a lined sample is good if you're going to copy an item and only put it in one place. So if you're going to copy an element in your photograph and place it in a single area, a line sample is a good choice. If I wanted to use her eye multiple times, I wanted to place that in multiple spots on the image, I need a line sample unchecked. Watch what happens when I uncheck it. It shows me her eye again. So I could paint out her whole face, but the moment I let go of the mouse, it's going to restart with her eye. If I press and hold the mouse and paint, I could paint her whole face, but every time I let go of the mouse, notice it restarts with her eye. So I could put her eye here. I could put her eye right there. Oh, that looks kind of weird. I could put her eye over here on her own forehead. You get the idea. So a line sample once. You want to copy something one time, check that box a line sample. You want to use your source multiple times. Make sure a line sample is unchecked. Okay, let me reset the image. Here's something else that you can do with the clone stamp. I have her eye under the brush. Many times when you're retouching or doing photo restoration, you're going to sample multiple points. So notice on the right side of my screen, I've got the clone source panel. Many people aren't aware that you have a clone source panel now inside of Photoshop. So here is my first sample in position number one. That's her eye. Notice I can click position number two. It's blank. I can actually go and sample her mouth. So now position number two is set up with her mouth. So I can toggle back and forth. Here I can start with her mouth and clone that. Or I can switch to position number one and that's her eye. The other thing that I can do with the clone source, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Hey, here she is under the brush. I can actually resize the sample. So notice the picture is getting bigger. Well, what I'm doing is actually changing the size of the sample under the brush. So notice now I could actually paint a much larger version of the girl in the photograph just by specifying the width and height in the clone source panel. The other thing I can do if I take a second, I can also rotate the source. So now I could also paint her in much larger, but I could have her rotated. So these are some things that you can do that will save you a lot of time, especially for your retouching and your restoration. I know we have cool things like content aware fill, spot healing brush, but every so often you, you need that clone stamp. It's still a useful tool. Let me show you some other cool tips. Something else you can do, 
you can have the overlay on or off. Let me just go ahead and reset this. So if you don't want to see the overlay, you don't like it in the brush, you can turn that off. If your brush is the full size image, maybe you forgot to check the clipped warning. So there's the clip warnings turned on. Hey, I'm going to give you one more tip. This is something that a lot of people don't think about. I want to clone out the girl from the wall. Hey, I'm going to actually get rid of one of the girls in the photo and I'm going to do this by sampling the wall. Now watch what most people do. They would option or alt click the wall. Here it is. And I can go ahead and I'm just going to click this across. Notice I use the wall. It'll take me just a second takes just a second to click that across. And this is because I'm using a round brush. But there's not a law that says when you use the clone stamp, the healing brush or spot healing brush, that those tools have to be round. Let me reset the picture and show you how I'd clone this a little faster. I'm going to go to my brushes panel. There's no law that says the brush has to be round. What if I made it an oval? If I made it an oval, look at that, I could actually sample more of the wall at one time. And look at this. Now I can take the whole wall across with an oval brush. That's just by going to the brushes panel and just simply changing the brush orientation and size. So there are some quick tips for using the clone stamp. Still a great tool, still really useful, and hey, you've got it in older versions of Photoshop. My name's AJ Wood. Appreciate you being here. If you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Hey, if you really like what I'm doing, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Better yet, leave me some questions. You know I respond to your comments, so hit me up on Facebook, on Twitter, on Google+. Leave comments here on the YouTube page, or even hit me up on my blog. So I'll see you guys next week on Monday. Thanks.